Why is there heaven and why is there hell? Well, this is a big question. And in theology, we don't talk about it because it's metaphysical. It has to do with haqqa'iq. And theology doesn't talk about haqqa'iq. Theology talks about things that everybody can understand. Haqqa'iq, which are metaphysical truths, um, let me give you one just for an example. Number stands outside of matter. I love that. Number, al-adid, stands outside of madda, matter. That is really big. And that is actually one of the things that's said by our teachers, but also that St. Augustine, uh, not, no, St. Thomas Aquinas, emphasizes. If Descartes, if Leibniz, if Kant, if Hume, if the early modern philosophers and everybody who came under them had only understood that, they wouldn't have made the mistakes they made. And they made some big ones. Descartes is brilliant. Yes, but he made some big mistakes. And so that means that number is not, is not quantity. Number is quality. Number is symbolic. Okay, so these haqqa'iq, um, you know, they really are beautiful. They are intoxicating. Most people can't understand them. But they can, we can tell it to you in poetry. We can tell it to you in music and song. That's what Rumi will do. That's what Ibn Farid will do. That's what others will do. But um, the haqqa'iq are beyond most people to grasp. And art is the language of truth. Beauty is the splendor of truth. So art in architecture, in clothing, in music, in design, it is to prepare us to understand these truths. And you see that in the great Islamic architecture wherever it was. But actually the answers to this question are in what we talked about tonight. That you are unique. You are undefinable. You are a little universe. And therefore, you can do what no one else can do. You can save the kingdom. Okay, no one else can do that. You have a crown, you've got to put it on. You're a queen, you've got a crown, you've got to put it on. And when you put it on, you can turn things around. You know, and the outer state of this world even the extinction of species, even the pollution of the environment, it reflects how inhuman we have become. We turned on our natures and therefore we destroy creation. If we turn back to our natures, we will restore creation. We will restore each other. And that's why the good people who do that, when God sorts it out in the end, he puts them all in the garden. That's the place they belong. They earned it. And he created it. And it has in it what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and has never occurred to the heart of a human being. But that garden, and I hope this doesn't confuse anybody, in all its beauty, is the outward corollary, the outward manifestation of your inwardness. You know, if you were the only one in this world, in all of your goodness, all of your purity, we would be walking on pearls and not on sand. Believe me, we would be walking on pearls and not on sand. But this world's got to be mixed, it can't be like that. And the fire, God created it, and in it too is what no eye has seen and no ear has heard and has never occurred to the human being. But it is the outward corollary of the inward reality of those miserable people, like the butchers of Syria, or the butchers of Yemen, or the butchers of the Rohingya, or of the Chechens, the butchers of the Chechens, or the butchers of the Bosnians, and go on and on, the Palestinians and others, right? Right? Like, what kind of people are these? You know, I was born on April 11th, 1948. 
On that day when I was born, the Israelis came into Deir Yassin, a beautiful village that never did anything wrong and massacred every man and woman and child to terrorize the Palestinian people. Okay? What kind of people do that? What kind of people do that? Okay, those are dogs of hell. See, so there has to be a place for them. And then there are a lot of other secrets there. And in fact, you see, on the Day of Judgment, you discover who you are. And alhamdulillah, you've got to discover it here first and work for it. You don't want to discover it there. But they all discover who they were. And they say, if only I were dust. Ya laytani kuntu turaba. If only I were dust, if only I were not a human being. It also means if, if only I were dead, because you're not. You're going to live forever. But you're going to live here. And you know that when they are judged and damned, they are relieved, believe it or not. And when they go into Jahannam, which is the top of hell, you know, and then they go down, every step is so bad that what was before it seems like heaven. And as they go down, they are relieved. Because it's like, this is what I deserve. This is what I earned when I killed the children, when I massacred the women, when I took the Syrian woman and threw her off the top of the building because she wore a hijab. Okay, I deserve this. What about the man who killed his child or who molested children or did these other bestial acts? Okay, so we ask God to forgive us, but there is great wisdom in this. And part of that is because you are not like anything else. You're not a cat. You may wish someday that you were, but you can't be one. And God, Al-Ilah, He does everything as it's supposed to be. Al-Ilah makes cats cats the way cats are supposed to be. He makes dogs, dogs, the way they're supposed to be. And he makes you the way you're supposed to be. And the Rabb, which is the same thing, but the Rabb is the one who commands you and is guiding you to where is your maqam? Where is your maqam? And I will give you everything you need. I will give you everything you need. And I will command you. And what I command you is wise and good. And I will prohibit you. And please don't do it. It's not good for you to do it. And I will show you mercy, and I will send you books. So, you know, you are not just the human story. You are the story of the universe. And there's got to be heaven, there's got to be hell. And they go on forever.